Everyone, thanks for being patient and being still here. This is the last talk of the night, and we are going to talk about building games for streams. So if, I guess everybody here is game developers. Um, and one of the hardest things when it comes to making games is finding players. So I think like Steam, mobile phones, app stores, it's so hard to like really like break through the clutter because it's an attention game. But you know what? You're actually competing against Netflix, against Twitch, against streams. But what if you could have your game running on the same streams that actually 4 billion people are watching every day? All of a sudden, you're not competing for attention. You're building on existing attention. And this is kind of what we've been doing at Hazardous. So you may have seen um, in the back, in the main room, some of us, our, our videos, which is not playing because this is great and we don't have internet, I guess, or something like that. But like, what we do is essentially, essentially we create games that run on stream and they get people who are watching to play together and earn rewards. So it's a very simple idea on a very wide screen. What's going on here? Like, there is internet. It should work. Next slide. I'm going to do it again. This is perfect. I love live stuff. Live is great. We have notification. We may have a video at some point. Um, so the way we do it is essentially we are loading. This is great. It worked yesterday per perfectly. So this is an example of the games that you can find on Twitch. Um, and our games are usually branded. We work with some of the biggest brands out there, and they use games to engage audience. And what's really funny is that these games, we make them show up over Twitch without having to install anything. You don't need an extension. You don't need a second screen. You don't need another app. You're just watching you, the usual stream that you are watching, and the game pops up. And everybody who's watching the same stream gets to play together. So it was really appealing for brands. And we have brands that are making games, that are want to talk to gamers. All those guys, they like the fact that they get to actually engage with an audience who's already watching. And in the process, the audience actually earns rewards. So it's really like about sharing the fact that if you're paying attention and you engage, there's something for you. The way I like to, to frame it is always like it's a t-shirt toss. It's just like when you go to a game, during the timeout, if you're in the stadium, you have so many cool things going on. You have t-shirt toss, you have animation, they, you have all those things that get people excited on their seats. But if you're watching on TV, all you get is a boring ad. So we're changing this game by bringing playable games on streams. This is pretty big. So today on Twitch, so we, we, we really like spend most of our time working on Twitch. We got some pretty big numbers. Uh, last year, almost 20 million people played this type of games on Twitch, on Azores. 200 million clicks. So this is actually pretty big. We were live on some of the biggest events that were running on Twitch, the Streamer Awards, the launch of Assassin's Creed, all those kind of things happen. And this is a really good example. So our games are simple. They're usually less than a minute and 30 seconds, totally skippable. Uh, but they get everybody who's watching to play together. And that's really the, uh, the core value of what we're doing here. It's getting the audience to engage and lean in. So how do we do it? Because like, how do we put video games on top of streams? It turns out what we found that when we started working on Azure's back in 2018 is that when you're watching a stream, it feels like you're watching TV, but you're not. It's not broadcast. It's not coming from a cable. It's not coming from a satellite dish. It's actually the internet. You are streaming using a format called HLS, which is a superset of MP4 that can do so much more than just deliver videos to a video player. And there's like a layer of actually metadata called VPAID and VAST, you, which you can see on this slide right here being demonstrated. This is like a basic video test from Google, which is supposed to help you test your ads. But 
you don't have to actually run ads. You can actually do more. You can load a wallet with user identity and load a game. And this is exactly what's happening here. We're loading one of our games, which is like a Flappy Bird type of game, right over an existing video stream. And this is pretty neat because today, uh, if you take anything that you stream, YouTube, ESPN, um, whatever you're watching on your TV, on your mobile, on your desktop, all those video players have that capability already built in. So today there's a way to launch a game on any single stream that you're watching. And nobody's using it. We're kind of like the one who built the first stack to actually try to do something with it. So this is an example of a game that we're launching on stream on, on Twitch. The skyscraper version, very small, like skippable, takes only a piece of the screen. But what's really cool about it is that everybody who's watching the stream is going to see the same thing at the same time, and they end up playing together. And some of our games have had up to half a million people playing the same trivias at the same time. And you get that type of experience, half a million people clicking for 30 seconds on the screen to get rewards. So now what's quite surprising and really interesting about working in this particular setup, which is streams, first, not everybody is actually watching the content at the same time. A stream is not perfectly like on point. You have some people like five seconds ahead, five seconds behind. You have actually some variability. It's not pure real time. And the other thing is that you get crazy amount of events. Like when half a million people are going to all of a sudden start clicking and sending events to the back end, that thing blows up. Um, and when we started back in 2018, the first time we went live, the back end blew up. And all the way until we managed to actually get to a place where we can scale to millions of people, that thing was a challenge because you really have that curve where Nothing is happening, and all of a sudden, poof, you get a million clicks. Not many backend actually su can survive to that, that type of load. So we ended up s building a stack to support specifically this type of experiences. One that really op optimizes the event collection and managing the, the, um, the experience, like the game loop and uh, the game state. And really gobbling really fast those events and updating the game set. And what, that's more about distributing rewards and separating that logic on one end, scaling the, ex the, uh, the experience, scaling the gameplay, making it as real time as possible and as quick as possible. And on the other si side, making it secure and safe. So if you win, we guarantee that you are going to get your reward. And that's where you, we use a blockchain technology layer just for that. So it's about distributing your prizes. Prizes are not necessarily Web3, can be like discount codes, can be anything. It also can be Web3 items. But it's really about securing the delivery of the items, of the rewards, and ensuring the high speed of the experience on stream. Again, this is all because streams are very different than anything else. Like when you have a game, usually you have people logging in, and you have like a slow start, and you can actually manage the increase of volume that you get on your back end, it's just not possible. You have folks like just showing up in Strove. You have people raiding each other. You will have a stream that goes from 10,000 viewers to 100,000 viewers in seconds. And that level of variability makes it impossible to predict. You cannot decide, I want to allocate 10, 20, 100 servers to this stream because you just don't know. So it's all about being able to really quickly process events update the game state, and deliver proof to the, uh, to the players so that they can then go and claim their prize. So since it's a game dev uh, session, we, we can go a little bit more technical about how that looks like. Um, but I'm going to like, basically point out a few things that are pretty unique to this setup. Um, the way this works is like on the game is actually simply an iframe. It's not rocket science. When we load the game over a video stream, we end up loading, loading an iframe on a session so that everybody who's watching the same stream gets in the same room. So if you've been working on making like regular massively multiplayer games, 
uh, you've probably used things like Colisius or some of the AWS services to create game sessions. This same idea. You launch a game, you put everybody in the same session, uh, and you make it fast. The, um, the game can be built on pretty much everything that you want. Initially, we're using Default, which is a really cool game engine. Unity works. You can also build whatever, using whatever game engine that you like, as long as it runs as a web game. Uh, so that's the one constraint. Because we're kind of using web technologies, and the loader will require an iframe. On the backend side, um, we built that entire frame really to gobble events as fast as we could. So the game logic actually is run in a Lua file. And this comes from the fact that back in the days, we're using a default. And if some of you have used default, it's a really lightweight and high efficiency um, like game engine. And so the game state is managed essentially through a simple set of entry points. And those entry points will let you capture events, update game states, provide proofs. And then at the top, uh, there's a smart contract. And the smart contract does a very simple thing. If you have won and you have the proof you have won, we'll deliver you a prize. That's it. So all the left side here is extremely um, high frequency, high speed, and can support the, lo the loss of events, but we guarantee that everything will be caught up and uh, we will deliver a proof. And this has to be as real time as possible. The top, the contract over there, does not have to be real time. And this is really where we separate the logic between having to be as real time as we can to support millions of folks playing the same game at the same time, but also ensuring security in the delivery of the reward. So building on Azurus, super simple. You make a very small game on iframe. 30 second core game loop focusing on one key repeatable simple element. You implement your game state, like what happens when you click that button, how do we update the state, and we provide infrastructure to really keep that state updated and uh, on point. And then the contract to decide, well, what do I do with it? Like if I win, do I get a reward? What's going on? So this is how all the games that you find today on Twitch that you can interact on are built. They are built using those three components. And if you, if you check out some of the streamers, or if you just go on Twitch and you see a game that you can actually click, uh, chances are this is built on Azurus and using our technology. This is back to the, uh, the, the, the example that I was giving earlier. So essentially, all the collection of the inputs, whenever you click a button, whenever you play the game, whether it's a Flappy Bird or Trivia, it goes through a WebSocket connection uh, using remote RPC calls, calling those primitives inside the backend that you've called, and going as fast as possible, obviously. And then when this is done, your identity, which is on the top left over there, will allow you to post your proof and get your reward straight into your balance. So those two steps and that separation really allows us to scale to the size of any stream. Another cool perk, because like blockchain technology is, has many use. The way we use it, we like to use it for transparency. Uh, so everything that we do can be verified. If we say we're giving you points, we're giving you rewards, we say, we're splitting them across all the viewers, well, you can actually go on chain and see what happens. So this is typically, if you win, you can go and record the proof. And this is like, a, uh, the function record proof and uh, play and reward that you find on smart contracts. And you can verify that you actually get a reward for that. So in essence, what we do is enabling new type of advertising. And many people have been using it for different things. Some of the endemic brands like Ubisoft, Capcom, have used that to create interaction over eSports stream. Uh, other uh, have tried, like prediction has been used uh, with Rainbow Six Siege um, streamers to kind of predict what's going to happen next and get people more engaged. Like, is he going to be able to get three headshots? So this is a really cool activation that was built uh, a couple of years ago for Siege uh, and connected to the data from the game itself. Mini games to engage uh, audiences and to support a brand. T-shirt us with Rakuten, super fun. And this really 
drills down to the fact that it's a better and more interesting way to engage audiences. If you manage to give them rewards to connect, get them to connect with what your brand values are for. If you're making a game, it's a great way to start getting people to think about, like, this is my law, this is how the game is played, this is what we're doing. Um, and potentially so many more things, like shoppable ads are things that are coming. There's, there's so many more things that you can build, whether you're a game developer, a publisher, or just a brand willing to connect to see with this audience. That, since we like, this is a game developer ground zero, this is something that uh, Assassin's Creed and Ubisoft did for the launch of Valhalla. Uh, they had actually a stream revealing the law of the new Assassin's Creed Valhalla a couple of years ago. And this was streamed on the main Assassin's Creed channel and co-streamed with a bunch of streamers. And everybody was playing the same as others game on their streams. And the game was trivias about the law of Assassin's Creed. And we got hundreds of thousands of people stay for an average of four hours answering and playing together answering questions about the law of Assassin's Creed. This created so much attention and concentration of fans. Um, and behind, behind that was both logic basically just painting a Photoshop uh, image, revealing stroke by stroke what the law was going to be for that new Assassin's Creed, which is the Norse mythology. So we really managed to like, create a layer of engagement and entertainment over this stream, which obviously would have been very passive and um, not so interactive without it. But people were just getting crazy and having fun, like, what's the answer to that question? It's a really hard one, and we went deep into the law. So this is a really good example of using our stack, our technology, to create an event and engage audience and get them to uh, discover, learn, and uh, get interested into a new game that you're launching. We have an SDK that's going to be released in a couple of weeks, uh, so we're very excited about that. And uh, so far, we've been helping our partners to launch their games and to customize it. It's going to be self-service in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and this is going to make, hopefully, everybody's life super easy. But there's one more thing that's super exciting, is that everything that we've built actually can go way beyond what ads can offer. The same technology, the same layer that we have could be used to build so many different things from, um, I don't know, like live minting. You're seeing something really cool on stream, you can mint in together, you can bid, you can actually fan, you can support your favorite creator, you can vote, you can engage and enter a battle against another group of fans. All those things can be, everything that's interactive over stream, even beyond ads, could be built using the same stack. So we're launching a bigger initiative called Stream, um, and that's going to be opening up and announced in a couple of weeks. You can already start following our Twitter or StreamHQ underscore XYZ. And this will allow anyone, any game developer, to kind of like go wild and create entirely new experiences that will run over existing video streams, either on our network or your network of creators. But we're basically putting everything that we've built, open source, available to the public, to start to create and define what's the future of interactive entertainment on streams. And this is it. That was the last talk of the day. Thank you so much for being here with us. <laughs>